Yo, what's up everybody? How you doing? This is your coach Renz. And first I want to give gratitude to everybody who subscribes to the channel. All those who are on my Patreon, which is Patreon forward slash coach Renz. And then everybody who orders from Uncle Renz Popcorn. Uncle Renz Popcorn, the best popcorn that you've ever had. We make it fresh, we deliver it if you're in the local Atlanta area. We ship it if you're too far away in Atlanta. But if you are anywhere in the continental United States, we will ship you a bag, two bags, three bags, four bags of Uncle Ren's popcorn. So look, I appreciate everybody who does it. And this having this popcorn today is very poignant to my point. <laughs> uh, and please listen to the very end. Listen to the very end. I'm gonna try to keep it short. And this video is not a video for you to argue. Uh, not a video for you to find a different point. It's a video for you to take wholeheartedly and say that, you know what? This is how my mindset has to be, and this is what my actions need to follow. This is about your finances. If you are anywhere interested in having great financial health, if you're anywhere interested in having a uh, senior or seasoned life that is filled with the ability to live it however you choose to live it, listen to the entirety of this video. Now, uh, this video is inspired by the fact that a week and a half ago, I said that there's an exercise that I wanted you guys to do where uh, you're going to figure out exactly how much does it take for you to live now and how much will it take for you to live that Hollywood lifestyle, the lifestyle that you truly desire. I hope that you've done that exercise. I hope you've done that exercise so that you know what's the money, how much money need to be coming in, not how much need to be in your retirement. Because that, unless your retirement is making you more money than inflation is increasing, making you more money than the cost of your living, then yes, that's cool. But if it's not, if you're not getting 12, 15% on your money, on your, your 401k or your investments, then you are going to lose. You're going to find yourself 80, 90 years old, uh, struggling to stay alive, looking for every senior discount. I'm not a discount guy. I'm not at all. I, I like to buy what I want to buy, and I'm not, I, I don't care about the price point. If, if that's the price, then I just want to buy it. If it's more than I can afford right the moment, then I'll come back later, or I just won't buy it. But look, I like to just buy what I buy. But that's not, that's part of the point of this video. So here's the deal. Um, I was having a, a, I've had this conversation with multiple people. Um, it's a part of my teachings on the richest man in Babylon and how to become wealthy. It's also partly inspired because my brother sent me a video of a congresswoman, senator, I don't know which one she is, uh, talking about how redlining is only 52, what, 52 years ago and that there's, there's a bill, there was a bill on the floor at the time of this video that wanted to get rid of the banks having to report who they're giving loans to, which means that redlining can start again if that bill went through or going through. So we have to be focused on that. I know y'all focus on who's going to be president, but it's the bills that pass in Congress that affects your life more than anything else. So we got to pay attention to those things and you have to get yourself prepared. But the most important thing that I want you guys to understand is that it's about your life. It's about you first. It's about what you do and how you raise your children and what you teach them. You're teaching your children more by your actions than you're teaching them by your words. So what are your financial actions? And that's what we're going to talk about, your financial actions. Now, one of the first things that I got to hit is that, as some of you guys know, uh, you know, I had to go and get a job a few months ago. I went and got a job and I was selling furniture. And it's not that I didn't like the job. It's not that I didn't like selling furniture. I mean, I don't like any job, but it's not that I didn't like it, but it wasn't something that was going to make the money that I need to make to sustain my lifestyle, sustain my household. That's one. Uh, some people it's fine, but for me, it's not enough. So I moved, I was recruited actually. I was recruited by the, by one of the top 10 Harley Davidson dealerships to come and work for them. And so I started working for Harley Davidson. And I'm having this conversation with a gentleman uh, yesterday. I'm having a conversation and we have a lot of parallels with our children, our children in college, uh, some of the accidents, car accidents, uh, what they're doing with themselves now, one child not really knowing what they want to do. You know, we had a lot of similarities. So we also start talking about business and work and money. Now I told him about Uncle Ren's popcorn. Shameless plug again. I told him about Uncle Ren's popcorn. And I told him that, and as some of you guys know that I went and I, 
uh, got my real estate license, just waiting on Greg to finish their paperwork, and I ha I'll have the license. So I passed the test, so I have it in hand. Uh, and then I'm selling Harley Davidsons. And the gentleman, uh, and I told him that I've done some, I do some business coaching on the side here and there. Uh, very few, you gotta be a very special person to be able to do it with me, otherwise I'm not doing it at all. It's not a primary thing that I'm focused on. And he said something to me that just got all up in my spine, right? He started talking about how we're, we're, we're on the same parallels, we're following a similar path, and that, you know, you gotta have multiple streams of income. I mean, he has a job. He's invest. He does four four square or four four forks. Or, it's four something. Um, re, um, investing online, and he's talking about how he made you know in, in three days thirty seven hundred dollars. And I'm like, okay, then that's a whole another thought process. Making thirty seven hundred every day, then or every three days, then you shouldn't be working. Yes, you should be one hundred percent focused on that. I'm gonna come back to that in a minute. Um, but evidently, you're not doing it every three days. Otherwise, no one in their right mind would stop doing it. And that his wife has a job. And that, you know, he starts going through all the different ways he's making money, uh, that he claims that he's making money, and he's a life coach. And I'm like, okay, you're doing a lot. You're doing a lot. You're a very busy man. You know, and he was like, yeah, it seems like every time I make some money, you know, it gets sucked out the window. And I said, okay, well, you know, you, you got to change the way you're living your life. You got to change the what you say yes to and start saying no to some things in order for you to change that. You can't say yes to everything. And I told him, I said, look, like right now, you can't say yes to a Harley Davidson. Like I'm quick to tell somebody when they shouldn't do something like that. You know, it's a luxury. It's a status symbol for um, and for enjoyment, for freedom. Uh, for most people, it's not a necessity. Now, for some people, that's their modes of transportation. I get it. But for this gentleman, it's not. It's not. So I told him, you can't say yes to it. Maybe in six months, maybe in a year, you can say yes to a Harley. But right now, no, you can't get this road glide. You're not, you're not gliding. Sorry. You, you ain't showing up, you know, at the jump off on Wednesday night, you know, at Camp Creek. That's not you. That's not for you right now. You, you, you got, you got to get your life in order here. Which leads me to the point that it got all up in me because he said we're on a parallel, that we're doing the same thing. And he was like, yeah, that's what you got to have is multiple streams of income. And I had to tell him something. This is the first big point that you guys need to get. And I know it took me a while to get here. And that is... I don't have multiple streams of income. I'm not interested in multiple streams of income right now. Multiple streams of income is a BS line that they fed to you in order to get you, keep you distracted from actually being able to become financially wealthy. Let me prove it to you. Warren Buffett didn't have multiple streams of income till well into his 50s after he built his primary company. Then he became Warren Buffett, the investor, in his 50s and amassed the majority of his wealth afterwards, later on. But he started, he had a pinball machine company. Then he had a vending machine company. But he focused on the one company and built that. Bill Gates didn't have multiple streams of income. He had one stream of income. And then he built, he had a job with IBM, with job, I don't know if it was with IBM or not. I think it was with IBM. But he had a job, and then he created, then he built Windows on the side with his partners, and then he pushed Windows while he still had a job and built it, and it grew, and he stayed focused on that. And it's not till later that he had multiple streams of income. Magic Johnson was an NBA player, made money playing basketball first before he started investing. Shaquille O'Neal played basketball first made money before he started investing in every dang thing in creation. But the fact I'm trying to get across to you, just like in the book, The Richest Man in Babylon, one of the messages that's missed, I never hear people who talk about the book say this, is that Arcad, when he was working as a scribe, a scribe, he first, and, he, and when he first started learning the lessons, um, he focused on one thing. He invested with one person over and over again, and that person kept paying him the rental interest on the money that he invested in the person. He kept doing that first before he was given an opportunity to go run another person's company. He ran that person's uh, affairs for three to five years. Maybe No, it was longer, but ran until the man passed on. He ran that man's business after he finished running that man's business, and that man gave him, and at his death in the wheel, he 
gain a portion of the estate. Then he started investing in other things and later on he had multiple streams of investment. His son Namasir first started investing with an investment group and stayed as an underling with them and grew in stature with them until for 10 years before he started investing in multiple things. My point people is this, is that I am not having multiple streams of income. That is not my perception. That is not what I'm doing. Let me give it to you so it's very plain and clear. My focus is Uncle Ren's popcorn. My focus is to perfect Uncle Ren's popcorn. I'm gonna tell you something that I've never said. Uncle Ren's popcorn is not as big as it should be, is not where it is, because I missed one lesson, one lesson. I can tell you a bunch of different details, then you can pile those up and say, well, that's why, and that's why, and that's why this one, and that's why that one. But the five locations did not make it because I placed the popcorn shops in markets that would not pay for a gourmet product. You see a Walmart shopper, consistent, not all, but a consistent Walmart discount shopper is not going to buy a gourmet product, a luxury product. I have to place my popcorn shop based on the market, not based on the availability, not based on the rent, not based on any of those things. Now, there are certain factors that go into it because even when you're in the right market, are you in the right space? Are you on the right side of the road? Is it easy to get into? There are things like that that do play a part, but all of that just leads up to, I did not put it in the right place. I didn't put it in the right market for people to be able to make the purchase because even in the whole market, the micro market of the location itself within the whole still has to be the right market. If I was just across the street, when I was in Alpharetta, I would still only be focused on Uncle Ren's popcorn. So what is working at Harley Davidson? What is getting a real estate license? Is it multiple streams of income? No, it is not multiple streams of income. Let me tell you what it is. Harley Davidson is a shovel, It's a shovel. Real estate is a brick, it's a brick. I don't want the shovel, nor do I want the brick. I got the shovel because it produces a hole. The hole is the result that I want. I got the brick because I can build a house, the house of rent. That's what I just, I want the house, not the brick. I want the results, not the actual tool to get me there. So a job, Harley Davidson, uh, Real estate, these are tools to get me to the point where I can open Uncle Ren's Popcorn, perfect Uncle Ren's Popcorn, duplicate Uncle Ren's Popcorn, ensure that the duplication is testable and it works, and then I will no longer need these tools. I will, and it may take two years, it may take three years, it may take five years. However long it takes, it doesn't matter, and that's the other thing that we gotta have is patience to do so, Namasir took 10 years. Warren Buffett didn't become Warren Buffett until after he was 50. And he started when he was like 18, 19 years old. I think it might've been 16 when he first started. Patience to get there, which is something that most people lack. Patience to get there. So I may be at Harley for a number of years. And don't get me wrong. I couldn't stay selling furniture, but I can, I can sell a motorcycle. I love motorcycle i love them love them. i'm riding today but so I'm, I'm really happy and it's one of the top 10 dealerships in the country so I, I i'm not doing something i don't love i love houses and i think that people have to understand that one of the uh seven cures of a lean purse is to purchase the home that you live in this is why my brother when my brother sent me that video i was thinking like wow it's so true but most especially in the black community we teach our kids to get rent my daughter, about a month ago, called me and said, Dad, why aren't there any apartments in East Cobb? And I said, because people who live in East Cobb buy their homes. They don't rent. They buy their homes. When we lived in East Cobb, buy your home. You buy your home when you live in places like that. They're not going to allow apartments because it's going to lower the value of people's homes that they've purchased. So, But if you go to the black community, predominantly black, it's apartment, 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 or they're rental homes that's owned by somebody who doesn't even live there. They live somewhere else. And we have to break that mode. Teach our children, hey, you stay home. 
right? You save money for the next year or two years. Get your down payment, build your credit, because these banks are gonna expect perfection out of you and you buy your home or you buy a duplex and let that person pay you rent. And then after you get enough of those, you buy your home. But you gotta look 10 times better on paper than the white guy. That's just the reality. And if you're white and you listen to this and you're offended, I don't know why, but that's just truth. It's just the truth of what how things were, how things still are, and how things can go get much worse if um, Humda goes through. So, you guys, we have to understand that that I am not, I am totally against when I see uh, every black person that I know running to every network marketing company, and you know they go from network marketing company to network marketing, and just because you know that one person that was successful, that three, I know three that was successful in the last one. Three people who were successful and made money to the point where they ne don't necessarily have to work anymore. They can just invest their money and let their money work for them if they have the ability to do so. Because I've seen some of them make some bad investments. But hey, we all make bad investments. I made bad investments in locations. Doesn't mean that I'm done. Doesn't mean I fail. It's a setback. So I've only seen three people actually make it work. Just because you saw three and you think, well, I could be the third. I can be one of the three. No, you're not. 90% of the times, you're not. You're just not. All right, not in the network marketing. It's to be honest. It's just not. It's just not going to happen for you. Uh, the amount of, unless you can take that and work it like it's a, it's a, your own, you're truly your own business, 15, 16 hours a day, then it may work for you. But other than that, it's not going to work for you. So what you need to do is look at your job as a tool. Your job is a shovel. But what you want is the result that it's going to produce for you. You want the whole. All right. Your job is a drill. You don't want the drill. You want the hole in the wall that it creates and not a hole in the wall. Well, actually, some hole in the wall places making a lot of money. There's a hole in the wall, a little breakfast joint. The cars be lined up out the, into the street. So sorry, sidebar, come back. <laughs> That's the thing. When that guy said that it took me all into everything that went there. My brother sent me that, that video. It took me there even more. And then it reminded me of when my daughter asked me a question about East Cobb and how people get consistently get caught up into these network marketing companies or these get rich quick kind of things, or I'm going to uh, invest in this, invest in that. And I got a friend, they made $10,000. Yeah, but they made it one time over the course of a year. That doesn't justify it as such. Even in real estate, I'm gonna tell you guys this right off the bat. I may sell real estate for the next 10 years, but the real estate is not the thing I'm trying to, I'm looking to perfect. It's not a source of income. Once I have two, three gourmet popcorn shops, gourmet popcorn, ice cream, and tea nice, Uncle Ren's popcorn, once I have three, two, three of those and they're producing, then I, I won't be selling real estate. I, I won't be selling Harleys. That, that won't happen. I'll focus on perfecting it even more, building it even more until it in itself is providing me a lifestyle that sp I can't spend. I, I'm not spending the money fast enough. And when, when more is coming in than going out, when it's that, when it's doing that, that's when. And and here's something that you guys, here's an advantage that I have. It's an advantage, I, I must admit. Because Uncle Ren's Popcorn has been around since 2012. But here's the advantage I have. My son, who graduated high school last year, who has worked in my popcorn shop as a kid, is the one who will be spearheading Uncle Ren's popcorn. If I didn't have my son, then I would have to to uh, take it where I gotta make sure I'm, I'm running the store more so than I need to. That I can still sell real estate, I can still work for Harley for a little while, but I would have way more involvement. But because my son, who has worked for me before, and he understands the basics, I won't have to be as attentive. I still will be attentive. I still will work both. I'll be on the phones working both. I'll show up on my days off. I'll be there. So I'll still have to work it, but I won't have to work it as hard. I'll be able to expand it, but I got a great help that I can trust to expand it. So I do have that advantage. But if you don't have that advantage, it's called SOPs and cameras. SOPs and cameras and a, a good POS system can ensure the safety of your business, the safety of your money. Because you can always watch a camera, you can always rewind it, you can always check your POS system to make sure people aren't stealing, you can always check your, your SOPs which should have your whole ordering system or however you do your process, all those things should be there. But at the end of the day, here's the lesson people, there's uh, uh, multiple streams of income is BS. You don't get multiple streams of income until you perfect the first one. 
You perfect the first one that work that can work without you. Let me be specific. Perfect the first one that can work without you. Then you can invest here and invest here, invest here. Too many of y'all are here, 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 here. You have what in Buddhist meditation is called monkey mind. Meaning that you go into the meditation, but your mind is just jumping, 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 jumping. You see a fast car, you jump. You see, oh, here's a faster car, jump. You see another car, jump. Here's another car, jump. And you keep jumping, 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 jumping. Instead of saying, what's my primary focus? Is it my primary focus? What are the tools that are going to get me there? In my book, and you can still purchase it, um, How to Escape Mental Welfare, go to CoachRenz.com, Coach renz.com and you can purchase the book for five dollars digital copy how to escape mental welfare i talk about how when you look at your list your 10 goals and you pick out the one two or three that will make the biggest difference in your in your life and then you focus on that one two or three goal and then you write and one of the ways you focus on it you write everything that can help you get there every tool that can help you get there yo a shovel oh uh, a drill Oh, uh, a brick. Oh, some cement. You start looking at all the tools, a bobcat, everything that'll get you to be to your final result. Because it's not the tools that you want; it's the result that you desire. That that's that's what it is. So you got to get to that, and that's why I, I need, I want you guys to go. My desire is for you guys to go there. So let's not make the mistake ever again. People have commented on other videos I've made about finances. About yeah, you gotta have multiple streams of income. I'm telling y'all. I know you don't. Right now, you don't. Until you reach that status where your primary is making more money than you can spend, you don't need multiple streams of income. You need one. You need to perfect the one. I am wholeheartedly interested in only perfecting Uncle Ren's popcorn. Coaching is something I just love to do. It's a hobby. I'm going to be honest with you. It's a hobby. I'm good at it, but it's a hobby. And it's something that in my old age, I want to just you know do that to keep me busy while my money's coming in. But it's just a hobby, standing on stage talking. I just want y'all to pay me to travel around the world to talk, to run my mouth. But that's a hobby. Understand me clearly, a hobby. This is my primary focus. Making videos are a hobby. It's a great form of expression. It's a great form of release for me. It's a great form of sharing. And as I told you guys before, this is how, if something happens to me today, it's passed on to my children. My children always will have a way of gaining the wisdom that I have, the knowledge that I well, the knowledge that I have, and the understanding that I have. It's up to them to put it into action to form wisdom. But sidebar again, my goal, your goal, has to be find that one thing, that one one thing that you can do, that you can build, that will make you money and have a constant stream of money coming in, so that you don't have to worry about showing up and it just works on its own. Figure that out. Once you figure that out. Then buy your house, buy your home, teach your children how to buy their home. Give them the knowledge, give them the understanding. Let them see you put it in practice so that they can gain wisdom by duplicating you. If you can do it, then it's testable. Now the next person can do it. And then it's repeatable. And if it's repeatable by your children, it becomes repeatable by the next generation, the next generation, the next generation, the next generation. Then it becomes just a fact of life. Once you create that then we become equal shareholders in this country called America, in this world, called on this world called Earth. We become equal shareholders until we amass the same amount of financial wealth so that we can have the same amount of power. Then we become actual citizens of this country, of this world. Until you do that, you don't. And we can go to the polls all day long, but look at what's happening in the polls. They trying to get rid of um, the uh, bank's uh, the, the, the watch eye, the watchful tower that sees whether or not they're not allowing black people and people of color to buy homes, which is one of the greatest financial products you will ever buy. It allows you to be able to uh, use the equity in it to start businesses. It gives you a stability in the neighborhood. It allows you to be able to have ownership. It builds some emotional, something emotional inside you. It allows you to pass down wealth to the next generation. It gives you a lot. It gives you a lot. We should all be striving to buy a home that you live in. Everyone should, especially black people. And you need to do it now. We need to teach our children differently. And for those who aren't black, who are listening to this and you're white, and you may think that I'm being focused on black people and I don't care about white people, here's the thing. You need to care. Because better neighborhoods that are owned have less crime 
their schools are better and which makes the whole better. If America is a body, you cannot have gangrene in one leg and think that the body is healthy. You got to have health in all of the extremities and the core and every aspect of the body. Every organ needs to be healthy in order for the body to be healthy. And so if you think that I'm this, I'm focused on black people for uh, out of some racist thought process or prejudice thought process, yeah, I'm black. Of course I care about black people a little bit more so as far as, because that's my experience, as far as our well-being. But our well-being is your well-being. And the more we can understand that, then the more we can truly follow the golden rule, which is do unto others that you will have them do unto you. You wouldn't want anybody redlining you. Don't allow somebody else to get redlined. You wouldn't want anybody else to fail in their business. Don't allow somebody else. You wouldn't want somebody else to be shut gunned down by the police or misrepresented in, in, in the government. Don't allow it. To, you wouldn't want it for yourself. Don't allow it to happen to somebody else. So you should care. You should care. And But more importantly, black people, you got to care for yourself first. Nobody's going to care if you don't care. Nobody's going to be upset if you're not upset. You got to care enough first to take care of yours and your own. If you don't, then you're just leaving yourself out there. So, hey, I appreciate you guys. I went about 10 minutes longer than I wanted to go because I'm really passionate about this thing. And please do not, do not, and I know some of y'all are jokesters, say nothing about, yeah, man, you got to have multiple streams of income. No, I don't. All, I, all these are tools, tools for me to build the house of rent. That's all they are, tools. This is going to build the house of rent. And from this house of Wren, then we play Monopoly. Then we play Monopoly. So y'all have a great day. Remember, you got to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Hey, go on order from Uncle Wren's popcorn. You know, that's the best popcorn, man. You got to get some of that.